Hello friends, this video on reproduction in animals part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. In this we have discussed about asexual reproduction. So now it is time to talk about sexual reproduction. So what is sexual reproduction? Now I have already given a brief about sexual reproduction. It is more common in higher animals and plants. So here, this mode of reproduction, new individuals are formed from two parents. So here one organism cannot give rise to new organisms. You, you need two parents, one male and one female. Therefore, sex is involved. So there is distinction between male and female sexes. So we need one male and one female of that organism for sex to take place. So the fusion between the male and female gametes give rise to the new organism. So gametes, I already told you, these are the sex cells. So the male person, male person will contribute one sex cell, the female person will contribute one female sex cell and then both of these will fuse together to form the new organism. So that is the basic logic of sexual reproduction. So in this type of reproduction, the new individuals which are formed, they are not identical to their parents. They might have similarities, but they are not going to be exactly identical. Like you can always distinguish your friend from his father, even though he has similarities with his father, but, his fa but the father and the son will look different. They will have their own identity. So why are we able to distinguish them? Because they are not exactly identical to each other. So here, some traits will be similar to parents, some traits will be new ones. And that is why we, see, we say that variations are seen in sexual reproduction. Now the question is, why sexual reproduction? No, we, when we already had asexual mode of reproduction, what was the need of having sexual reproduction? So it was good enough that one parent alone can give rise to new organisms. So what was the necessity? So to incorporate variations in species which in turn ensures survival of a species. Now variation is something which doesn't come into picture if it is asexual reproduction. Because in asexual reproduction all the organisms are exactly identical to each other. So there are no new traits which come up over a period of time. But in sexual reproduction there are new traits coming up with each generation and that's how it can give rise to new species altogether. So these variations are use, useful to ensure the survival of species because we can also give rise to new species. Each individual in a species has its own uniqueness and identity. That's what I was talking about just now. That you can always identify a particular person. If you talk about human beings, you can always identify one person as one unique individual. So you do not see 10 persons looking alike. So everybody looks different from one another. Like even the siblings, you, you look different from your brother as well as sister. You, you look so different that others are able to recognize you as you and your brother as him. So that much difference is there. So there are differences because of which each particular individual will have its own uniqueness, will have its own identity. So that's why all individuals look different. So if there are 100 students in your class, all of them look so different from each other. So you name them. So you know he is X, he is Y, she is Z. So you know them all separately. So now the question is how this entire thing happens. So let us try to understand how exactly these DNA that is the genetic material. So by now we know where is our genetic material located, from where the information gets passed on from one generation to the next. So where is all these located? So this is our body. Our body is made up of several cells. Now if you peep inside each cell, you will be able to see a nucleus. Now if you magnify the nucleus, this is how it looks like. So inside the nucleus you have these chromatin threads. So these threads, if you look more closely, they condense to form chromosome. And on this chromosome, you have genes. And what are genes? Genes are the units of inheritance. So you have gene for every specific trait which is seen on your body. You have one gene for hair color. You have one gene for eye color. You have one gene for skin color. You have one gene for 
eye shape. So for each and every trait, you have a particular gene present on this chromosome. Now what are these genes made up of? They contain the genetic material called DNA. So basically this DNA is passed on from the parents to the offspring and that is how the traits are passed on from one generation to the next generation. So I think with this you know where the DNA is located. Now why I am telling all this is you should know that why during reproduction or how sexual reproduction helps to produce variations how sexual reproduction helps in inheritance of traits from one generation to the next. So this is where the DNA is located. So now what happens? Now inside the nucleus you have these chromosomes and the number of chromosomes is fixed in a particular species. So for example, if you talk about human beings, in human beings there are 46 chromosomes which are present inside of inside the nucleus. So this number is fixed. That means all human beings will have the same number of chromosomes. But if you talk about any other organism, again that organism will have different number of chromosomes. Now, what happens during reproduction? Now during reproduction, you need a male and a female. So you'll have a father and a mother. Now both of them will contribute one DNA copy during reproduction. So this mother and the father, both of them, each parent will make a copy of their own DNA. So mother will have its own DNA, father will have its own DNA. So here I have represented this as blue, this as brown. Now both of them will create a copy of their own DNA and then these two DNA copies will combine to form the daughter. So let us suppose this is what the mother contributed this is what the father contributed and both of these will combine to form a new DNA and this new DNA will form the child. So now in this new DNA it might have some traits of the mother, it will have some traits of the father, it will also have some new traits. So that is how variations come into picture and this DNA is present inside the child. So the child is not formed directly, right? Once the fusion takes place, that is once the male and the female gamete fuse together, a single cell is formed which is called zygote. So this is the name given to the single cell which is formed immediately after fertilization. And this zygote will undergo repeated cell division and it will gradually grow to form a new human being. So inside this zygote, this cell will be present which has some traits from father, some traits from mother and that's how you carry off traits from one generation to the next generation. And this is how reproduction helps in inheritance. So I have tried to explain this in short because I do not want to get into more detail because you might not be able to understand the concept then. So overall this is how it helps. So now let us talk about gametes because I have been using the term so often. The gametes are the sex cells. So these are some specialized cells which are present inside our body and they have half the number of chromosomes as compared to the other cells and that is why they are specialized. Because as I was telling that in case of human beings all the cells inside our body they have 46 chromosomes. The only exception are these sex cells. So how many chromosomes these sex cells have? They have half the number of chromosomes. That is they have 23 chromosomes. That is why when the, when the father contributes one sex cell, mother contributes one sex cell. So father's sex cell will have 23 chromosomes. Mother's sex cell will have 23 chromosomes. Both will combine to form 46 chromosomes. So that will be the cell of the child. So this is how it is. So let us suppose this is the mother. Let us say this is the father. So the mother will contribute a female sex cell. So this is the female gamete. So let us suppose this is the female gamete. And let us suppose this is the male gamete. So the female gamete, as I said, this is that specialized sex cell which has half the number of chromosomes. So it has 23 chromosomes. This also has 23 chromosomes. Now when both of these fuse together, they form total 46 chromosomes. So this forms the zygote. 
So inside the zygote or inside the new organism which is going to form now, it will have 46 chromosomes. But these 46 chromosomes, half of them have been received from the mother, half have been received from the father. So it will have traits from both of them. So fusion of male and female gametes give rise to a new organism. So that's how it happens. Now, in some organism, the male and the female gametes are exactly identical to each other. Now, gametes are also known as sex cells or germ cells. So, germ cells is also another term which is often used for gametes. Now, how are these gametes? Now, is it necessary that the male gamete and the female gamete, they always have to be identical to each other? Well, that is not necessary. Sometimes they are exactly identical to each other. Sometimes they are very much different from each other. So those organisms where the male and female gametes are identical to each other, that is known as isogamy. Iso means same. Gammy is gamete. So same gametes. That means they have identical gametes. So let us look at some example. Let us examples are green algae like chlamydomonas, pyrogyra. So they all have identical gametes. So the male and the female gametes. So here the plus symbol represents male, minus symbol represents female. However, in this case, both of the both of the gametes are so identical that you cannot distinguish which is a male gamete and which is a female gamete because they look exactly similar. So the male and the female gamete. Now again, the male gamete, so here you see a male and a female, again here a male and a female, again here a male and a female. So the way male gamete looks like, the female also looks the similar way. Similarly, the male gamete looks and the female gamete looks are exactly similar. So this type of isogamy is seen in green algae like Chlamydomonas, is one example. Spirogyra is another example. So these are some of the organisms where uh, isogamy is seen. So this is Chlamydomonas. This is Spirogyra. On the other hand, there can be some organisms where the male and the female gametes are completely different from each other and this is known as heterogamy. Hetero means different, gamy means gametes. So here the male and the female gametes are so different that you can identify them from each other. And the best example would be human beings. Now in human beings, if you see the male gamete and the female, male gamete is very much small when compared to the female gamete. On the other hand, the male gamete is motile. It can move from one place to another. But the female gamete is non-mobile. It cannot move. Now, in human beings, the male gamete is motile due to the presence of a tail-like structure. So, this is the male gamete. And this is the female gamete. So, male gamete, you see, it is smaller in size than the female gamete. But it has this tail because of which it can move. So, it is mobile. Whereas the female gamete, it cannot move. But it is quite big in size and it helps in storage of food. So, that's how they both have different structures. They both have different functions. They both have different features. So, the male and the female gametes are quite different from each other. So, you gametes in case of human beings is an example of heterogamy. So, we will hereafter study how these gametes are produced in different organisms. Now, here we will focus mainly on animals. Yeah, and for animals also, we will primarily take the example of human beings because that will help you to understand it in a better way. So, we will see how the male gamete is produced, how the female gamete is produced, how fusion takes place between male gamete and female gamete to produce the zygote and then how the zygote develops into the baby. So, that all those things we will study now. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.